In this video, we'll be talking about the vectors for gene cloning, that is plasmids and bacteriophages. A DNA molecule needs to display several features to be able to act as a vector for gene cloning. Most importantly, it must be able to replicate within the host cell so that the numerous copies of the recombinant DNA molecule can be produced and passed to the daughter cells. A cloning vector needs to be relatively small, ideally less than 10 kb in size, as large molecules tend to break down during purification process and are also more difficult to manipulate. Two kinds of DNA molecule that satisfy these criteria can be found in bacterial cells. They are plasmids and bacteriophage chromosomes. Plasmids are circular molecules of DNA that lead an independent existence in the bacterial cell. Plasmids almost always carry one or more genes, and often these genes are responsible for a useful characteristic displayed by the host bacterium. For example, the ability to survive in normally toxic concentrations of antibiotics, such as chloramphenicol or ampicillin, is often due to the presence in the bacterium of a plasmid carrying antibiotic-resistant genes. In the laboratory, antibiotic resistance is often used as a selectable marker to ensure the bacteria in a culture contain a particular plasmid. Most plasmids possess at least one DNA sequence that can act as an origin of replication, so they are able to multiply within the cell independently of the main bacterial chromosome. The smaller plasmids make use of the host cell's own DNA replicative enzymes in order to make copies of themselves, whereas some of the larger ones carry genes that code for special enzymes that are specific for plasmid replication. A few types of plasmids are also able to replicate by inserting themselves into the bacterial chromosomes. These integrative plasmids or episomes may be stably maintained in this form through numerous cell divisions, but always at some stage exist as independent elements. Plasmids fall into two groups, conjugative and non-conjugative. Conjugative plasmids are characterized by the ability to promote sexual conjugation between bacterial cells, a process that can result in a conjugative plasmid spreading from one cell to all the other cells in the bacterial culture. Conjugation and plasmid transfer are controlled by a set of transfer or TRA genes, which are present on conjugative plasmids but absent from the non-conjugative type. However, a non-conjugative plasmids may, under some circumstances, be co-transferred along with a conjugative plasmid when both are present in the same cell. Several different kinds of plasmids may be found in a single cell, including more than one different conjugative plasmids at any one time. In fact, cells of E. coli have been known to contain up to seven different plasmids at once. To be able to coexist in the same cell, different plasmids must be compatible. If two plasmids are incompatible, then one or the other one will be rapidly lost from the cell. Different types of plasmids can therefore be assigned to different incompatibility groups on the basis of whether or not they can coexist and plasmids from a single incompatibility group are often related to each other in various ways. Bacteriophages or phages as they are commonly known are the viruses that specifically infect bacteria. Like all viruses, phages are very simple in structure consisting merely of DNA or RNA molecule carrying a number of genes including several for replication of the phage surrounded by a protective coat or capsid made up of the protein molecule. For all types of phages, the general pattern of infection is same, which is the three-step process. In the first step, the phage particle attaches to the outside of the bacterium and injects its DNA into the cell. Then the phage DNA molecule is replicated, usually by the specific phage enzymes coded by genes in the phage chromosome. Then other phage genes direct synthesis of the protein components of the capsid and new phage particles are assembled and released from the bacterium. 
With some phage types, the entire infection cycle is completed very quickly, possibly in less than 20 minutes. This type of rapid infection is called a lytic cycle. As release of the new phage particle is associated with lysis of the bacterial cell. The characteristic features of a lytic infection cycle is that a phage DNA replication is immediately followed by the synthesis of capsid proteins and the phage DNA molecule is never maintained in a stable condition in the host cell. 